Hi, in this video we're going to do some more work on our GPS tracking app. This is the third one and we are going to start configuring these buttons here that allow us to switch from cell phone tower accuracy to the GPS accuracy. And then maybe we'll actually see some events here happen with our location services. So that's coming right up. So in this part of the video, we're going to start attacking this button right here that says GPS and save power, which is the ability to switch between the GPS service and the cell phone tower tracking. So let's put in a click listener for this guy. So to put in a click listener, we go ahead and type in the name of our switch, which is SW underscore GPS. And then inside the parentheses of our event listener, we're going to add a new click listener. So now let's do the code for the inside of our switch. So we're going to check to see if the switch is checked. So checked means it's turned on. If that's turned on, then we want to be setting this to use the GPS sensors, or we call that priority high accuracy in the vernacular of this function here. So we're going to use the constant called location request dot priority high accuracy. Then we're going to update the text view called sensor, and sensor tells us which service that we're currently using. And so we're using GPS sensors. And of course, then else is going to do the opposite to say, hey, we're not going to use the high accuracy. We're going to do a balance between power accuracy and the, the priority of uh, getting more accurate results. And then we're going to tell it that the sensor is using the towers or Wi-Fi. This would be a good time to check to see if it actually works. So let's turn it on and run it. So we've got ourselves power and uh, GPS down at the bottom, and you can see that the, uh, the label is set correctly, and we hope that inside the internals that the variable is also being set correctly, but we won't know that until we get a few more lines of code. All right, so now we're going to create another method, and uh, I just want to mark the end of our onCreate method here because it's going to get longer and longer here, so I'm just going to put in a comment. So the new method is called update GPS, and it does several things. First of all, its goal, obviously, is to update the GPS location. So we'll have to ask for permission from the user before we can make this work. And then we'll get the current location from the, uh, the fused client. And then we'll finally update the UI, or the uh, text views, so that it'll display all the values on the screen. So you can see we're getting closer to actually making this app work. So the first thing that we have to do is invoke a variable that was declared at the very top of the application. So it's fused location provider client. Remember, this is the heart and soul of how this application works. So now we're going to actually assign a value to it. It comes from something called location services dot. And we're going to get the location provider client. And that is associated with a context. And so we can either put in the word this or main activity dot this. So the first thing we start with is the permissions issue. So I'm going to put an if statement to say if the activity compact, that's the, that's the class that is our application, if that is going to get a permission check to say were the grant, permissions granted for access find location? That's the if question. Do we have permissions? If we do, then we'll continue on to get those locations. If we don't have permissions, then we need an else statement and we're going to have to go request those. So that's some things yet to do. So let's assume that we have permissions from the user. So we're going to now call our fused location provider client and use the method called get last location. So whether that's five seconds ago or 30 seconds or 10 hours, we're going to take whatever it has in its memory. And then we're going to use an unsuccess listener. So we're chaining these things together with dots. And then inside of there, we're going to have another unsuccess listener item. So this will eventually feed us to a variable called location. So the location uh, variable that you see in this parameter will contain lots of things like latitude and longitude and altitude and speed and the other things. And so we'll be able to take that location class and update our text views. So we'll do that in just a minute. That's still a to-do. So now let's do the work for getting the permissions. So first of all, 
there's a catch here. You have to check to see if the value of your current Android operating system is sufficient. So we need to be at build number 23 or higher. And so the build code for 23, as you can see, is the letter M. Now, if we have the correct version of an operating system, then we can go ahead and get the permissions. So we're going to use the request permissions command. And then request permissions comes in the form of an array. And the first item of the array is the location or the, uh, the, the type of permission, which is access find locations. And then we need to provide it some other number. So we could use a number one or two or three or whatever. We're going to make a constant. We're going to call it permission find locations. Now you can see that we have several things that are underlined in red. So these are errors that we must resolve. So for the first one to resolve, I forgot to put in SDK underscore int. So build version integer has got to be greater than 23. Okay, my mistake. Then the other record goes away. And then finally, this permissions fine is not set. So we need to make this into a constant. So we have an, a choice that says make this a constant. When I make it a constant, it shows up at the top here and we have to provide it a value. So let's create something, I'm going to call it 99. You can use any arbitrary number you want. Well, now we're going to have to have another method here that will actually go and request these permissions. So let's go up to the top of the screen and we're going to override a method that comes with our activity. So finding uh, line number 20, which is our activity. So app compat activity is the base class that we're, our, our main activity is based on. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to choose generate. And this time I'm going to choose override methods. Now there's lots of methods that can go into a main activity as you can see here. So many to choose from. What do we want? So what I'm looking for is the on request permission result. And what that does is it tells the uh, program to trigger a method after permissions have been granted. So let's see what comes in the form of this um, new method that just showed up here on line 92. So the key part to recognize in the permission request with result is that there's a request code, which is going to be the number 99 that I had assigned earlier. And then the permissions, which is which thing did we actually get permission for, and then the results. All right, so let's get on with the code inside of this function. So first of all, the uh, request code is important. So there could be many different requests that we've gotten, and we're only interested in number 99. So in our switch statement, we're going to say, check the case for permissions, find location, or we could type 99, either one will work. Now, if the request was from that permission, then we are going to update the GPS. So that's the function that we just got done coding a minute ago. And then if, uh, if they didn't give us permission, if they denied them, then we'll just give them a toast message and exit the program. So let's scroll down to uh, where the uh, update GPS function is. So we didn't do anything here once we got permissions. So this is a whole bunch of stuff to do. We could code everything right here. We could just update all the text views. However, I'm going to provide this as a, a separate function just to keep things a little bit more compact. So the new method pops into existence down at the bottom of the list. So it's rather arbitrary where it goes, but that'll work. And uh, I'm going to put in a comment to see what the purpose of this function is, this method. So we're going to update all of the text view objects with a new location. So where's the location at? So what I need is a parameter. So I'm expecting to get a location from the other function. So let's uh, put in the parameter here and then go back and patch up the other reference. So it says you want to do uh, update values. So you're missing something. You're missing a location. Well, do we have a location? Yes, that's what this variable above us gives us. Location is given here. So location, location, location. Okay, so I'm going to save that. And then um, let's see, I don't see any more errors. So this is some to-do work that we'll have to come back to in just a moment. But don't forget, 
that just because we asked for permissions here, uh, they're not yet defined. We have to go into our manifest to fix those. So let's go and look in the manifest. So I'm just going to type in uses, and then magically it seems to know what I want to do. Uses permission. And then the name of the permission we're looking for is access find location, and then we close the tag off. So we can close it as you see it written here, or I could put in just a slash close, and that's a self-closing tag. So either one of those will work. Okay, so that's the permissions. I probably don't need to see the manifest anymore, so I'll close it. Now, let's just finish off what we started here. We're supposed to update the UI values, so let's go add those now. So what I'd like to do is set the text for TV lat. So remember, text view latitude is what I'm talking about. And I want to get it from the location dot get latitude. You would think that would work. Well, things aren't always that easy. So the problem is get latitude is going to return to us an integer and set text doesn't automatically convert from integer to string. So I've got to go in here and parse it. So the way to parse an integer into a string is to use the string method called value of and we'll surround the integer that we're trying to get. So I'm going to do two others that are fairly similar, so I'll just copy and paste. So the second one is get longitude, and so we'll just change a few text items here and we got longitude. The third one is accuracy, also is just an integer that we're going to display as a value of how accurate the computer knows its accuracy is. Now the next item that I'm going to accomplish is the altitude. And it seems like not every phone has the ability to get the altitude. So we have to check to see if it has an altitude. They actually made a function called has altitude. If it's set to true, then we'll get it. If it's not set to true, it means or it's probably null, then we will just say it's not available. The same kind of thing holds true for speed. If your phone can calculate the speed, then we'll display it. If it is not set, it is not a value, it'll be null, and so we'll just say not available. So we've got ourselves this final product almost. We've got ourselves the update val UI values, and that was called from this method called update GPS. So we could have put all of that code in, uh, inside here and up update values, but we might want to use that again somewhere else. So that's why I separated it into a separate function. But hey, if you want to put it all together, it'll still work. Now we've got to use this function. So I've created the update GPS, but have we actually called it anywhere? I don't think so. So a good place to call that would be right at the end of our onCreate method because everything's been set. Now we're ready to do update GPS. So I'm going to save this and let's see if it'll work. I'm going to run it. All right, so you should get permissions to show up. I've already run mine once and so they're not there. Uh, but I, di I did give it permissions. And you can see I have a GPS location here. So this is the, the default location that is found in the settings of my virtual phone. If you put this on a real phone, you'll get the location where you're at. And so it appears that mine's working. So location updates on off is not doing anything yet. We still got that to go. The second switch is theoretically working. However, I really can't test it on this phone because it's a virtual phone. But on your real phone, you can check this out. So we've got ourselves a one-time update. It is just checking when the app launches. That's pretty good, but we want to have the app to be able to turn this service on and off, which is this switch, and we also want to be able to track this as it's turned on, so every 30 seconds or every five seconds. And so that's still some work to go, but we'll fix that in the next video. So stick around and we'll refine our application to be even more useful than it is now.